honored veterans, SCHS faculty and staff, students, and members of our wonderful community. I am Stephanie Husky, principal of Sevier County High School, and once again, despite the worldwide pandemic, we are pleased to present the 28th annual Smoky Salutes Veterans Day program. Legacy is important to us here, and for the last 100 years, Sevier County High School has stood as a testament for leaving a place better than you found it. To our beloved veterans, thank you for your example and for your sacrifice for doing the same for our country. And we are training our students to pick up and carry on the legacy that you have set forth. So it is with great pleasure that we dedicate this performance to all veterans and we hope that you enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the 100th year celebration of Sevier County High School and our 28th annual Veterans Day show.
veterans, we thank you for your service to our country. Please listen for your service hymn in recognition of your branch of service. <laughs> direct your attention to the chair draped with the POW MIA flag. It is spotlight to remind us of those who are still missing in action today. It is a reminder that there are families who are still missing their soldier, airman, sailor, or marine.
From the time it was written by Francis Scott Key until today, the national anthem is a fitting tribute to the defenders of our country. Sevier County High School presents our national anthem, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join us as we say the pledge to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As we look back over the past hundred years of our school's history, our own Sevier County High School Smoky Bears have always answered the call of duty to serve our country in World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, and the War on Terror. Our Sevier County High School students have led the charge to honorably serve both our community and our great nation. Since Sevier County High School opened her doors over a hundred years ago, Servicemen and women have been committed to honoring our country and returning to serve our community. We are proud to honor our veterans' commitment and sacrifice. Our veterans have gone above and beyond what was expected of them to build a legacy that they have fought in battles, come home, and given back to our community. As we look forward to our future as a Smoky Bear family, we know that our students will always find the best in themselves, give the best in themselves, and build on the legacy that our veterans have started before them. Ladies and gentlemen, as part of our 100th year celebration, Sevier County High School is honored to present the 28th annual Smokey Salutes, the legacy of us, 100 years of veteran service.
28 years ago, we began a tradition of saluting our veterans. In attendance, we were blessed to have World War I veterans who were able to be recognized and honored. Sevier County native Charles Claybo attended our Veterans Day programs at Sevier County High School when we first started our tradition of honoring our veterans in 1993. Born in 1897, Mr. Claybo became a school teacher and began teaching at Baskins Creek School. However, when the United States entered World War I, Charlie Claybo enlisted in the Army and began his basic training in Spartanburg, South Carolina. He boarded a ship in Hoboken, New Jersey in 1918 and headed to Europe. Mr. Claybo is one of the unfortunate soldiers to be on the ship of death, the USS Leviathan. 700 soldiers had to be removed from this ship before it even set sail due to the Spanish flu. Some had to be buried at sea during the voyage to Europe and others were buried in France upon arrival. Mr. Claybo caught this deadly flu but survived the terrible ordeal. Mr. Claybo's granddaughter, Carrie Claybo, had the opportunity to interview her grandfather when he was 87 years old and record his story in his own words. I kept the flu myself, Audie, while I was there. Went to the hospital and pulled up and couldn't get in. I got so weak and turned right back to my bed. I said, I can't stand there. I had to eat now. I had to drop nothing for three days. And I had to get in pretty bad shape. But that night, well, I, I flew broke on me. And I coughed and spit up a lot of stuff. Next day I felt better, and like the fever breaking on me. And I laid there two or three more days, and finally got to get a little hungry. And I put all the duty there as a cook, and the heifer in the kitchen. And I got up about the second day after I got to get better and went down there and went through there and hunted everywhere to find something to eat. Couldn't find nothing they could eat, and didn't want to get no desire for it to come from more of age. And uh, they fit the taste. I ate two of them there and went back up, back up to the bed. And I got the two more, peeled lamb, and took them up there and put them in my basket, to call it, where I had a plate or pan I eat out of, and save them for the next morning. They two that night and two that evening, next morning. Then by night, I think I went down, uh, went down through the kitchen to begin to eat a little. But just a week to that flu, I was just barely couldn't go. When the ship arrived in Bordeaux, France, Corporal Claybo was well enough to march off the ship. He and his unit slept in barns and outbuildings and trained in the roads. Mr. Claybo witnessed the end of the World War I. Listen as he describes his own personal experience. And the officer there got up on the plank or car or something, he said, it's, it's all over. said, the United States and Germany and signed arms. Then the soldiers there, we all took over from down to him out. We got to jump it up and down and hollering and screaming and so proud of it and hollering to the top of my voice. And we drowned it out of all the rounds. We're surprised that it's Corporal Claybo served for several more months in France guarding German prisoners of war. He also taught servicemen to read and write during his time in the military. When the men found out he was a teacher, they asked him to help them, and he did. Mr. Claybo came home to resume his teaching, and then he became a rural mail carrier for the Gatlinburg area. Corporal Claybo passed away on May 25, 1999. Sevier County High School was honored to have him participating in our Veteran Day shows. Serving the military, our country, and our community, Corporal Charles Claybo was the last surviving World War I veteran of Sevier County.
Williams and Miss Julia Householder have been a prominent part of our high school and community for many years. Miss Julia taught history at our school for 31 years. Mr. James retired from Stokes Electric Company after 35 years of service in our community. As a World War II veteran, Sergeant Householder served in the military from 1944 to 1946. Because he worked on his grandfather's farm, his draft was deferred until after the harvest was over. Stationed in Camp Blanding, Florida on the rifle range, Sergeant Householder was a sure shot. He was hitting every target. His superior noticed his sharp shooter skills and asked where he learned to shoot like that. Householder replied, Sir, I've been on a farm all of my life and I've been hunting squirrels and rabbits. The sergeant then gave Householder the job of training other soldiers how to shoot like him. He was told, your job is to teach the city boys who don't know how to shoot. He stayed at his training base until January of 1945. Once he was sent to Europe, Sergeant Householder met with another local veteran, Leonard Loveday. They were in the same squad. These men fought in battles together all the time while overseas. Sergeant Householder was sent as part of the replacement group for the men who died in the Battle of the Bulge. Landing in Lahore, France, he entered Belgium in January. He crossed the Rhine River on March 25, 1945, three days before his 19th birthday. Mr. and Mrs. Householder met at Maryville College after Mr. Householder attended college on the GI Bill. As Smokey Bear fans, this couple has not missed a Veterans Day show since 1993. In 22 years, they've only missed one and a half football games. Being a 1944 graduate of Sevier County High School, Mr. Householder said that the best thing about being an SEHS alumni is that he gets to be a big old smoky bear. As Sevier County High School continues the rich tradition of honoring veterans, veterans have continuously given back to Sevier County High School in ways too numerous to count. Though not a graduate of Sevier County High School, veteran James Jim Plow, who lived in Jefferson County, began attending Smokey Salutes Veterans Day performances when he heard about our show. He and his wife have attended for many years. Mr. Plow would write a thank you letter to the school each year speaking about how he was happy to attend and how he felt so honored by the efforts of our school. He became an honorary member of our veteran alumni. Where do I begin to thank all those who participated in the Veterans Day program? Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. First, there was the culinary group who served breakfast. Then the friendliness of the students to us veterans could not have been forgotten. My wife and I have been attending your Veterans Day program for a number of years. Say hi to the young lady who did the ballet to the wonderful choir rendition of the Tennessee Waltz. She also escorted me on stage. It took me 81 years to finally get on stage. Being big fans of John Philip Sousa, we always enjoy the sounds of the, your band. We're so glad it's such a big part of the show. We really appreciate the spirit of patriotism shown by your students, both in the program and as an audience. When I was in the service from 1951 to 1955, there was no observance of Veterans Day. When we came home, it was, have you been away? Looking forward to next year's program. Sincerely, Jim Plow.
As one last thank you from Mr. Plow, one afternoon in July 2016, a package was delivered to our school. He sent us his Navy dress uniform. He was so dedicated to our students and our school that he felt he should give his uniform to us so that we could use it in future shows to honor more veterans. He could have chose to pass it along to family members or donate it to museum, but said he wanted it to be a living part of history here at our school.
As a Vietnam veteran, Spec 4 Harold Stinnett looks back over his life and says that the decade of the 60s started with him being a fifth grader at Wherewood School, going to high school, heading off to war, and by 1969, he was in a military hospital recovering from injuries he sustained in Vietnam. At 18, Harold Stinnett's life was just beginning. He said that Vietnam had seemed so far away to him and his friends, his friend would even joke about their future plans. He and his friends would ask, what are you going to do when you get out of school? And he replied, I'll probably end up in Vietnam. He had no idea that he would be speaking the truth. As a 1968 graduate, Harold was part of the last graduating class from the original Sevier County High School. When he returned from Vietnam, everything had changed. A new group of students had started in a brand new high school and the world moved on while he was fighting a war. When he received his draft notice, Spec 4 Stinnett had to quit his job and report to the induction center to be sworn in for duty. He described that the worst part of the military was homesickness. After living in Wurz Valley all of his life, he had never been more than a day's drive away from home until being drafted. Once he realized that he could not come home, Harold settled into military life quite well. As he arrived in Vietnam, he had one mission, and one mission only, survive and come back home. Specialist in it explained that orders from the Vietnam War were different from World War I and World War II. Servicemen and women were called for a tour of duty in Vietnam. He was not going to be there for the duration of the war. He was expected to do what he was told, fight, survive, and come home. He and his fellow soldiers kept short timers calendars. When they started counting on the days, they would say, 100 days and I'm going back to the world. 50 days left and I'm going back to the world. It didn't matter what was happening in the Battle of Vietnam. When their tour was finished, they would be able to go home, back to the world they once knew. He just had to survive to get back home. Spec Force Stinnett was part of the F Troop 17th Cavalry Division, where he was a scout on an armored personnel carrier. His carriers would find open fields, set up camp, and wait for the infantry to join them. On September 14, 1969, Specialist Stinnett's life changed forever. And we're into the past midnight into the 14th now. My turn to pull guard duty had come and went. And I had went back to my, we didn't have uh, on the person up there, we slept on the ground or wherever. So I had uh, went back to sleep and then I heard the dreaded sound incoming. And when, the, of a, especially of a night, Again, each person had his um, duty. When we heard incoming, the driver's job was to get in the personal carrier, start it up, and start closing it up. Each of the other three men, our job was to get to our weapons as quick as possible. So we, um, I remember the, just like yesterday, the, Personnel carrier, I heard it start, saw the ramp start coming up, and we all got inside. And as we were getting ready to go to our weapons, then there was a terrible explosion. The uh, personnel carrier had been hit by RPG, rocket propelled grenade. The rocket propelled grenade is designed to go into a vehicle and then explode. The walls apparently on the personnel carrier let it go all the way through for it exploded. And uh, The RPG come close to my back that it blistered it like a sunburn. Three of us were wounded. Sergeant Sweet was killed. Hmm. He was uh, out of Dumas, Texas, about my age. Our personnel carrier, of course, was out of commission. We were wounded. And by the time I regained my composure, 
several other of the personnel carriers around me were on fire because that was a danger because of the all the ammo and the um, uh, diesel fuel and all and just as quick as it the battle started it was over hit and run they gathered us up uh, the wounded found a place to call in a what they call a dust off the helicopter put me on the um, chopper along with every man that we could get on there because about half of our company was wounded that night three killed and half wounded sent me to a little mice unit checked out my um, wounds, made sure they wasn't life-threatening, and thank God they wasn't. Put me on a chopper again. Flew me to Da Nang, where they checked out my wounds. I had shrapnel wounds, and they sent me in actually took me into the operating room to check to make sure no vital organs or anything had been hurt. When you're in service, there's a phrase we use. When it's about time for you to go home, get out of the service, whatever, they say, we're short. This nurse looked at me and said, Soldier, you're short, aren't you? I said, no, ma'am, I've got five months left. Mm. She said, no, you're not, neither. So you go now. The state was, was made, my war was over. Fifty years later, I can tell you, Anyone that's ever been to war, it's never over. We live with it every day. Now, I feel like that I'm one of the blessed ones because I was able to come home, make a good life, I think my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for my salvation, for my protection, and my wife who has stood by me all these years.
After the Cold War, America was called upon again to restore peace in Kuwait when Saddam Hussein invaded in August of 1990. U.S. Navy Captain Gideon Almy said at the time, President George Bush decided to send an overwhelming message to Saddam Hussein to get out or we as the United States would move him out. As second in command of the USS Tarwa, an amphibious helicopter carrier, Captain Almy was in charge of training over 800 sailors, ensuring that over 2,000 Marines and all of their equipment, including trucks, tanks, and howitzers, made it to the Persian Gulf region. Captain Almy explained that tremendous coordination brought all the United States military forces together in that corner of the world. The United States made it happen and we did it right. It was the first real engagement that involved all the forces to such an extent since World War II. When asked what the military meant to him, Captain Almy stated, it's given me an opportunity to go to sea. I always wanted to go to sea. I grew up in a Navy town, Newport, Rhode Island. I dropped out of high school. The Navy helped me get my GED, some college courses, and 13 promotions. I am grateful for the opportunity the Navy has provided me. Captain Almy retired to Sevierville, Tennessee and became a volunteer with the Sevier County High School Band and the Veterans Day shows starting in 1994. He said that when his son signed up as a freshman at the high school, so did he. He drove the instrument bus to away football games on Friday nights and to band competitions. He was at our school almost every day for four years. As a volunteer, Captain Almy said that being a part of the band and Veterans Day show was a great experience. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd work for all my life. And I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today. Cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away.
Joe Cates graduated from Sevier County High School in 1994. In 1999, he chose to join the Tennessee Army National Guard as a way to protect our nation and our freedoms. In the moments after September 11, 2001, our world was changed forever. As the horrible attack unfolded, Americans realized that we would never be the same. We held our loved ones a little closer. We called friends we hadn't spoken to in months. We watched the news nonstop for days. Sergeant Cates, along with the 190th Corps of Engineers, was sent to Iraq as part of Operation Enduring Freedom. There he trained the Iraqi forces to protect themselves against hostile enemies within the country. He was stationed in Iraq and Kuwait. He communicated through phone calls and letters to his wife, Cassie, and their children, Hunter and Becca. In one letter, Joe describes his time in Kuwait. He felt the call of duty to his country and his family with each letter that he sent. Hey babe, how's Kodak? Well, I hope. I figure I get one more letter in the mail before I leave this great kingdom of Kuwait. And that's what they say when you land. Welcome to the kingdom of Kuwait. I thought the Mojave Desert was wide open, but this is unreal. It's like an ocean of sand. From horizon to horizon is sand. Seeing the camel is pretty neat. We also saw a herd of long-haired sheep with their little shepherd boy. He just sat there on his little donkey and watched the sheep as they walked around the sand eating God only knows what, because I couldn't see anything edible. I took some pictures. I missed some good footage of us doing some military operation urban terrain training. Some of the other guys took 20 second films, but no sound. This is some of the best training I've had since I've been in the Army. Live rounds. I don't expect to do many dynamic entries while I'm here, but I'll be in the city during elections. The government has already fallen and things are pretty bad. Just remember, I love you guys. I think about you constantly. I hope to get some R&R &R in June or July. It's not certain, but I'm supposed to. I'll let you know when I find out. I'd like to get Hunter at school one day and surprise him. I wish I was there now for his birthday. I'm hoping to get to talk to him today. I hate it for him. I hope the puppy takes his mind off things. I worry about him more than anything. I mean, I worry about all of you, but he was here when I joined. Becca wasn't here yet, and you helped me decide to join. I guess I feel guilty. I didn't have to come here. I was being selfish, I guess. The way I feel now, though, after this tour, I'm through. However, if I stay in and can help other soldiers be better or more prepared by sharing the experience and knowledge with them, I've got to get through this first. Pray for us all. I'll talk to you guys later. I hope I can call you soon. Be planning that vacation. I don't care where. Love you all. P.S. I hope I didn't say anything to bring you down. Stay up. The kids need you. Keep them busy. Hunter Cates grew up wanting to be in the military. He knew of his family's rich heritage of military history, which traced back to the World War I. He wanted to be a soldier just like his dad, Joe. He dressed in camel when his dad would return from missions, and he couldn't wait to sign up to do his part for our country. Once he graduated from Sevier County High School in 2016, he enlisted in the United States Army. Reflecting on September 11th, Hunter thought about the seriousness of his duty as a soldier and his family. In a letter home, Hunter wrote to his father about how his dad's life had influenced his thoughts, his dreams, and his actions. September 11th, 2016. Dad, well, it's quiet here, very quiet. Fifteen years ago today, America was catapulted into another war that we really are still fighting. The enemy just has a different name. D.S. Silva graduated basic on October 17th and was in Iraq on December 23rd of the same year. I really hope that doesn't happen to me. But if it does, so be it. I want to go, but just not that quick. It's nerve-wracking to even think that by the end of the war, I could be in Afghanistan or Syria. Oh well, not going to change a thing. I don't regret coming at here at all. It's like, right now, 
If they told me I was going, I'd be scared. But I'd be proud because I feel like I was making a difference. That's why I came, right? I can't wait to see you and talk to you about all the stuff I already knew because of you, Dad. Dumb as it sounds, I don't think you could have done a better job at being a father. You taught me a lot from how to shoot to which leaf to use to, you know, and right from wrong. Not saying I always do right, but I usually know what is. So know that your grandson, not saying you're getting one soon at all, will have as close to the same father I did, as close as I can get. But I know I won't be able to do as good as you, so I'll need you to pick up my slack when you see him. <laughs> Well, I gotta do laundry again. Clean my boots. I love you, Hunter.
Great. Good. Sevier County High School has been serving the community for 100 years. Within that service, veterans have played such an important role providing our students with an opportunity to see how much it means to serve and sacrifice for our community. Veterans have set the example from our first class of students to our 100th class of students and for the next 100 years to come. The legacy of a soldier, airman, sailor, and marine will live on in the students who will continue to serve because they have seen your service, your sacrifice, and your love of country. This is a legacy of us. Veterans, we thank you for the legacy that you have built. May we continue to share in this legacy, build on it, and may we always make you proud to be part of our Smokey Bear family.
My name is Tabitha Ogle, and I'm the coordinator of the Veterans Day Show here at Sevier County High School. When we first looked at what we were going to do this year, we were very concerned that we wouldn't be able to do a Veterans Day Show because of the pandemic. But our students were more concerned that they would not be able to honor you. So we decided to record a show because there was no way that we were going to let the day pass without honoring you. From the very first day of school, students said, what are we going to do, Ms. Ogle? How are we going to honor our veterans this year? And I told them that our team was going to come up with some sort of a plan. So I really hope that you've enjoyed our Veterans Day show. Thank you so much for watching.